This screencast is to show you how you might do the pre-reading for your scholarly article using your scholarly article and pages 15 and 16 of the Bring a Text You Like to Class unit. I'm going to show you how I might scan and preview the text, and then I'm going to show you uh, how you might look at jargon and figures. So we'll start off here on page 15. I've got my text, Oceanography and Women, Early Challenges by Enrico Bonatti and Kathleen Crane. I'm just going to look at first the directions which say scan the text, read the first few paragraphs and the conclusion, and then once you've done that, make some notes. So go ahead and just maybe pause the screencast and do that right now. After you have scanned the text, just kind of given it a first preview, look at some of these questions down here. And I'm asking you to try at least three. Do more if you have time. Don't worry too much about the notes. Just jot down notes that will help you understand either on this handout or on a separate sheet of paper. And then be ready to share what you have found out with some peers in a group for number six. So let's take a look at number one. I'm just going to answer that question. In scanning the text, what do you expect the main topics and ideas will be? What clues make you say so? Okay, so I'm going back to my text, and I can tell that it's going to be about oceanography, studying the oceans, and probably about female scientists. From what I know about history, I know that while women are certainly as talented as men, uh, historically women haven't had the same opportunities. Uh, through discrimination, uh, discouragement, women were often found it much more difficult to find work in fields like science. And this continues to some degree today. So the early challenges might be who are maybe some of the first female scientists to pursue oceanography and what were some of the challenges they had because of this prejudice and discrimination. Also, perhaps uh, difficult just because there weren't as many women in the field, so maybe harder to find a mentor or someone to help you out. So I'm thinking that's what that is going to be about. I'm going to scan through the text, and I see that there's some pictures of, uh, it seems to be a while ago, these might be the early pioneers of oceanography. Uh, we have an ancient ship, I'm not really sure how that's going to play in, but there might be some history in the text. We've got another woman uh, working on a ship in 1925. So this is probably, Marie Fish is probably an early, uh, early female scientist in this field. We've got a heading, post-World War II oceanographers, women oceanographers. So here we've got, you know, 1945 and on. That might be when women started to make more, um, have more opportunities in the field maybe. And if we keep going, maybe just one more or two more. Uh, this is an interesting phrase. This woman, I won't even um, embarrass myself with my bad French. Uh, in English, we would say Joan of Arc. And she was actually put to death. And she was known as a very independent, um, you know, sort of independent-minded woman who would, who would take action. So I wonder if the woman in oceanography here, uh, who I believe is going to be this woman, Roberta Eike, or Ike. I wonder if she was persecuted similarly. Um, here are two more women. Neither one of them is Roberta Ike. Um, but if we keep going, there she is. So I, I, I don't know her story, but I'm guessing that she's going to be a kind of an important person in this article. So you get the idea. I've, I've scanned the text. I've got an idea of what the main topics will be. Let's take a look at number four. So what kind of audience does this author seem to be expecting? What is the author's own field of study? Besides the author's own academic field, are there researchers in any fields who might be interested in this research? All right, well, I'm going to go to the bottom. Sometimes that's where the author's info is, but no. All right, so having gone to the bottom and not found it, I'm going to go to the top. And here we've got, keep going, sorry to take so long to get back to the top. Okay, so here are the authors, um, but let's see if we can find out who they are and why they're writing these, this article. Here's the abstract, I keep going, there we go, this little, um, kind of sidebar right here tells us. So Enrico Bonatti is the special research scientist, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so he's a scientist. 
And Kathleen Crane is a program manager for climate research in the Arctic. So they're both scientists. Um, so if we go back to the question, what is it asking us? I'm guessing that they're going to be expecting a scientific audience uh, since they're scientists. Besides the author's own field, are there researchers who might be interested? Well, if we look, there's some... Um, I'm sorry, I'm going to look for that uh, picture of the ship. So we've got some ancient history here. So this might be of interest to um, people who are called classicists who study ancient Greece, ancient Rome. And uh, there's also a possibility that historians would be interested because of how early some of these pictures are, right? This is, we're looking at around 1895. So there might be historians, uh, maybe 19th century historians, maybe historians who study United States history, who would be interested in this topic. So you get an idea of how I can understand more about my text just by scanning it. After you've read these uh, questions and kind of got an idea of what your text might be about, you're gonna find two or three more classmates and then discuss and kind of take some notes on each other's work. I'm gonna move on to uh, page 16 and let's talk about figures first. So it says, are there any images, tables, or charts that are labeled as figures? Well, you can find the figures. Look for pictures. Would be your first place to look. This is figure one. And it's this picture of the folks on the beach in 1895. Figure two is this ancient ship. <clears throat> figure three. And if we keep going, we'll see there's seven figures in this text. So you can find out a lot about the text from the figures. Then let's talk about jargon. So when we're talking about jargon, it's the kind of phrases that people who are familiar with the subject all know. So for example, if you're a football fan, you know exactly what defensive pass interference is. No one has to explain it to you. But if you were talking to somebody who didn't follow football, they would be really confused. Even if they know what the words defensive pass and interference all mean, they might not know what they mean together in a sense of football. Uh, some words come up in education that are that way where you might know the meaning of the word, uh, but you don't know how teachers are using it. So we have to be careful when we're communicating to avoid using jargon with people who might not know it. But we have to be aware that writers, uh, academic writers, often use jargon because they're expecting their readers to be familiar with the topics. So I'm going to show you an example of some jargon. Great example of some jargon in my abstract is going to be this phrase, a heat flow geophysicist. Now I know what heat is, obviously, and I know what flow is, and I can guess that a geophysicist is a physicist who studies the Earth, because geo means Earth, like geometry or geology. But I don't know exactly what all these words mean together. So if you come across jargon, you're going to want to have a strategy. I'm going to probably look this up and see if I can find out uh, exactly what a heat flow geophysicist is. I can guess that it's somebody who studies maybe lava or volcano because that's how heat flows under the earth. But I'm probably going to want to find out for sure. I also might ask Miss Felix or one of the other science teachers who, who might know more about this. So when you come across these words that you don't know, maybe you know what the word means, but you're not sure how it's used in the context. You may want to use the dictionary, but it might help to have other strategies as well. Um, talking to someone who's familiar with the topic would be helpful. Searching for the information online can help. Trying to figure it out as I did from the context might help as well. Okay, so that's figures and jargon. If you happen to finish with 15 and 16 before the end of the period, go on to page 17 where uh, you will work with a partner to do a think aloud. I'll have a screencast for that assignment uh, the next time we meet. If you want to get started though with a partner, you can go ahead and work ahead.